Hi guys, welcome to Sarah Says. This is part two of my book review on Mrs. Poe. And this is with spoils, spoilers, so if you haven't read it and you don't want to get into detail, don't watch this. Um, just watch the first one, read it, and then maybe come back and watch the second one. But um, one of the things that I had mentioned earlier in the first book review was how she made the authors very relatable and made them like real people. And there's one um, scene where there's an editor and he knows all of the different famous authors and he basically puts out books of poems and books of their writing and that's how they get well known. Of course there's no internet back then so you had to be well known in your circles to be um, published further out and get famous that way. So if you wanted to be anybody you had to be in these books of poems, you had to be in magazines, you had to be in journals. So Reverend Griswold is one of the characters and he's an editor and he publishes these books. Now these are all real people. Um, well, Reverend Griswold has a thing for Fanny. He really wants to be with Fanny even though she's married. She's uh, Mrs. Fanny Osgood and um, she likes Poe in the book and they have a relationship together. And um, Fanny's husband has left her he is a famous portraitist and uh, he has left her basically as just taking up with rich divorcees and he is painting their portraits and basically just living off of their money and he's, he's no good. He left her and he's cheating on her and he has been gone for like eight or nine months and to keep a good face Fanny is just like oh you know he's, he's out, he's doing work, he's being commissioned, he's traveling. Um, because she doesn't want to be the talk of the town that she's this um, abandoned wife because even though it's not her fault she gets looked at in a down um, she looks get looked at like down their noses um, because she's now um, at home abandoned she's got these two little girls they're like six and nine and she's taking care of them by herself and she's living with a friend um, but if she were to divorce him she would have um, scandal on her head even though he's the cheater and he's abandoned her and he gets all rights to the children so I thought that was kind of interesting that society has flip-flopped now you get divorced usually the mom gets the kids well back then the father owned the wife and the kids so he got the kids if they got divorced and so she didn't want her children to not have a mother and to abandon her children so she she put up with it so anyway her husband's off gallivant and doing his thing and um, she's at home with the children and in the meantime Reverend Oz um, Griswold is trying to get with her and he keeps making advances to her but every time she shows an interest in Edgar Allan Poe he's like oh so when is your husband returning how is his trip and so he's got this very biased um, you know view on marriage that okay well if she's with me it's okay if she gets with me and she cheats because she's abandoned but if she gets with Poe she's scandalous and she's a cheater um, so Reverend Griswold is this editor and he is walking along with Fanny in this one scene and the rest of their group and Fanny tries to kind of fend him off but because she's an author she can't be too nasty to him because then he won't put her poems in his book and it will destroy her fame and her name. So there's this whole little social dance that's going on and so Reverend Griswold's walking with Fanny and along comes Nathaniel Hawthorne and any high schooler who's read the Scarlet Letter knows that Nathaniel Hawthorne is you know famous for the Scarlet Letter and Nathaniel Hawthorne is talking to Griswold because he wants his book to be published and he says not now Hawthorne I'll read your draft of the Scarlet whatever as soon as I can and I just thought that was really funny you know if you're a literary geek like me that's funny to you because of how famous Nathaniel Hawthorne is for the Scarlet Letter and here you have this editor who's like ah whatever it's a piece of crap I'll read it whenever I get to it um, so that just put a face on the the authors and the characters there but some things that I wanted to, to point out I mentioned um, in my first review that she Lynn Collin does um, a historical fiction well she brings in all these kind of cool interesting facts and she paints New York in 1845 and it just it really puts you there you really feel like you're there she talks about uh, derogotypes or derogotypes I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce it but it's the earliest form of photography and how it's um, catching on at this time and basically it's your portrait on a piece of, of metal 
um, and it takes a lot of work. It's very labor intensive, but she talks about that and how it, it affected the livelihood of Mrs. Osgood's husband, who was a portraitist. And they have these debates back and forth as to whether you can actually capture a person's soul and feelings on a derogatype versus an artist who um, sees the person's soul and puts it down on, on um, paint. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of cool. I ended up looking it up and I learned a lot about early photography and um, it just kind of makes you think about what it would be like to live during that time. It was very expensive just to have one picture of yourself taken. Um, but yeah, so Frances Osgood, she was a real author. She wrote Puss in Boots. She also wrote several poems on um, flowers and love and things that ladies were supposed to talk about. And during this time, Poe comes out and he's famous for the raven, the poem The Raven. And he actually hates this. He hates the fact that he's famous for what he considers frivolous work. And, you know, it's funny, we study this today and we were like, oh, you know, his alliteration and his onomatopoeia and, and the way he writes, it's just so fantastic. And Poe himself is like, oh, that was a piece of crap. Poe was writing esoteric things, things about philosophy. And they weren't being taken seriously because people wanted to be entertained. They wanted to be scared and titillated. Um, so Mrs. Osgood finds herself trying to support her two girls by writing and um, you know her editor is just like you, you gotta write scary stories like Poe does so she finds herself conflicted with wanting to write something worth substance and um, you know she finds that the scary stories are vulgar she doesn't like them and she's the only one to tell Poe that she basically doesn't think The Raven is a great work of art and he starts to love her because of that because he himself doesn't think it's a great work of art now Poe married his wife Virginia when she was 13 years old by the way she was his first cousin so there's a little bit of um, you know incest and drama going on there and when he married her he was in a bad frame of mind um, he went through a lot of um, trauma <laughs> when he was younger his father left him when he was two his mother died when he was the age of three he was adopted by foster parents. The mother wanted him, the, the foster father not so much. And his foster mother died when he was six. And so his foster father sent him off to boarding school and basically said, you can't visit, you can't come home for holidays. And his foster father died, very rich man, and left Edgar Allan Poe nothing. So when his foster father died and he was out of school, he was just very in a bad state. And um, he went to live with his aunt uh, who they call Muddy in the book, and Muddy is the mother of Virginia, and Virginia takes a liking to Edgar Allan Poe, and they end up getting married. And he said at the time she was mature um, for her age, but she never grew past that. So in the book, you see Virginia as very immature and um, kind of spiteful, and um, you think throughout the book that Virginia is actually trying to kill Fanny Osgood and it ends up being um, Muddy in the end, which I thought was very interesting. Um, Muddy had gone senile and kind of lost her mind and um, as you as you realize the ending that it was really Muddy all this time, you go back and you're like, oh yeah, Virginia really wasn't doing this or she really wasn't doing that. Um, poor Virginia was really just trying to be Fanny. and. When I say it was, it was kind of like a soap opera, I mean, if you think about it, you've got this younger wife, she's completely head over heels for her husband, but her husband has disdain for her because she can't look past um, just society and being famous. She loves her husband's fame and he wants to talk to her about philosophical things and she just doesn't get it. And now he's met this other woman and she's trying desperately to be this other woman. She even wears um, dresses like her and um, tries to tries to talk like her and it just doesn't work and it's a very sad picture on on both ends um, of what happened but that's you know it's kind of a, a recap of what goes on in the book um, but I thought it was interesting there's a Fanny Butler there's two Fannies in the book Fanny Butler was uh, from London and she married an American man and he owned slaves and she did not realize until she was living on the plantation how much she would detest this. And she actually divorced him out of principle. And, you know, today we would think, well, good for her. You know, she didn't know what she was getting into. She stood up for what she thought was right and she left. Well, no, back then 
She was considered shamed. She was considered indecent. Real um, polite society women were not supposed to have opinions. They were not supposed to have principles. They were supposed to believe what their husband believed and support her husband no matter what he said or did, whether it was right or wrong. So she divorced her husband over this principle and she is considered scandalous for it. And decent women get up and walk out of the room when she comes in. So there's what they call conversations during the book and they meet and it's all these authors that meet and there's like a social hierarchy and um, the really famous more rich ones are together and the ones that are trying to come up and become famous, they're like in another room and you see this give and take, this pull back and forth of, um, you know, societal pressure. And, you know, this Fanny Butler's a really good person. And she, she gets no respect because she left her husband because he was a, a slave trader. Um, let's see. Talked about that. Something else that I thought was funny was... Um, there's a, a Mr. Graham, and they're talking um, philosophy and health, and he says how you should be a vegetarian, and that you um, you need to watch what you eat because they put fillers in your food, they put plaster in your flour to make it stretch further, they put um, ground up rats in your sausage to make that stretch further, and how he believed that greed was the demise of the American society. And I just thought that was kind of funny that even back in 1845, you still had what you consider health nuts um, who were looking out for what you should eat. And um, at the time, he said that, um, if you don't know, um, completely kind of side note here, the first dildo slash vibrator was created because women were hysterical. And so proper women in 1845 were not supposed to enjoy sex. They were not supposed to have carnal desires. They were just supposed to lay there, let their husband have sex with them, and be done. Okay? So any woman that showed um, uh, a desire towards another man was considered hysterical. The word hysterical comes from um, the word, and just like hysterectomy, it comes from a word that means the womb. Um, so anyway, Mr. Graham creates these graham crackers that we still eat today uh, to uh, suppress the woman's libido because he thinks that women who express a desire in men are unhealthy. Um, and I just, I found that really funny that we still eat graham crackers and what they were originally created for. Um, but the fact that, uh, maybe you don't know this, but Edgar Allan Poe was considered like a stud back then. He was considered handsome and he was mysterious. And even back then, women wanted the bad boy, right? He's the guy that writes these mysterious, creepy novels and um, he's considered, you know, on the edge and sometimes vulgar. And he was known for laying into other authors and tearing their work apart. And so all these women were falling at his feet, which was kind of funny because if you look at pictures of him, I don't think he's very handsome. But um, so there was this conversation about how women shouldn't have a desire for him and that, that needed to be uh, suppressed. But um, Lynn Cullen actually says that she didn't intend on this book being a sad kind of drama. Um, she just kind of wanted to reveal the, the mistress of Poe. And, you know, the more she did research and discovered what really happened in their lives, it kind of turned out that way. And at the end, she has an author's note, and she says how um, Poe and Mrs. Osgood presumably had a baby together. Um, Mrs. Osgood got pregnant during her affair with Poe, and then we assume that when she got back with her husband, Mr. Osgood, he adopted the baby and said that it was okay um, because he was out cheating and doing his things. So they got their family back together, and that was how she hid her pregnancy. But um, the baby died only at 16 months old, and in that same year, shortly after, Mrs. Osgood died. Um, and Virginia had died as well, um, all within the same time period, the same year pretty much. And Poe was just devastated by this and he died two years later. Pretty much everybody died of tuberculosis, which they also call consumption back then. Um, coughing up blood, fluid in the lungs, things like that. Um, and Fanny presumably died of tuberculosis and Fanny's two daughters died at the age of... Um, 
I think it was 12 and 15. I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, her two daughters died at a very young age too of, of tuberculosis, so it was a hard time um, back then. And um, it was it was a very interesting read altogether. And if you are interested in historical fiction, um, I think that you will find this book very interesting. They even talk about um, there was a famous Madame Restelle, and they talk about Madame Restelle's house, which was next to Poe's house, and basically it was an abortion clinic. And abortion was made illegal, and um, they arrested her, and she slit her own throat in a bathtub. And when she died, she was worth, in our terms, 12 to 16 million dollars. So abortion was very lucrative um, back then, as it is now. Um, so they talk about, you know, the the things that affected the society then, and how it was handled. And I found it extremely interesting, and I would suggest that you read it too. So I hope you enjoyed. I know I rambled on a bit, um, but that's just kind of how our book club meetings go. We talk back and forth. Um, so read it. Tell me what you think. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Sarah says.